Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Let me start tonight with this. As Butch Cassidy once asked, who are these guys? What a ratty bunch. They spend their days holed up in the Senate taking pot shots at the president, trying to bring down his defense chief. Nasty as hell. They have nothing good to say for the country, only nasty words to spew about the people running it or hoping to. John McCain, who served the country so admirably, has become an angry fellow from dawn till dusk, taking an occasional break to remember who he is and saying enough of this when his new allies get out of hand. When Ted Cruz starts attacking the loyalty to America of one of McCain's fellow Vietnam vets, a combat vet at that. But the viciousness is something we haven't seen before because of its combination of McCarthyism and this weird unconnectedness. Attacking Chuck Hagel, for example, because no one will give us info or anyone info about the Benghazi situation, even though Hagel wasn't even in the government when Benghazi happened. Sick stuff. And it seems to be growing in inverse proportion to Obama's popularity. The better he looks, the worse these characters, Inhoff, Cruz, McCain, and Lindsey Graham, are determined to look. Did you notice the smile, by the way, on John Boehner's face sitting up there behind the president during the State of the Union? If you did, you're imagining things. So afraid of the hard-hating right of Republicans these days, of every stripe, that even Boehner's scared to death of looking like he might actually like something Barack Obama had to say. To do that today is to risk political death in these days of Republican defeat, anger, discontent, and downright hatred. So let's go at it. Our guests are Joy Reid of the Grio and Michael Steele, former chair of the Republican National Committee. Both are MSNBC analysts and good ones. Well, let's take a look at this. And is this delay on the Hagel vote about playing for time, hoping new information comes out about them? Well, the New York Times reports today that anti-Hagel groups are right now hoping for exactly that. Quote, leaders of these groups said in interviews that they expected their efforts to include more phone calls, urging conservative voters to tell their senators to vote no, new efforts to unearth embarrassing details, from Mr. Hagel's past, and potentially a new round of television advertisements pressuring Democrats to drop their support for him. Michael Steele, it used to be a president got his cabinet. Yep. Uh, now, when you want your own defense chief, you get to get the entire opposition party to the last man and woman voting against it. And what I don't even get is one reason. I mean, if you ask all those Republicans, what do they do to, to uh, filibuster this? They won't give you one answer. Each one will come up with his own or her own little number. Right. Well, because there is no real reason to filibuster this nomination. I mean, the president's made his choice. He's coming off a very, very strong election. Uh, and as, you know, as much as you know, I may have an issue here or there with something that Hagel said or did in the past, this is the president's choice. He's ultimately going to be accountable to the president, not to uh, the Republicans in the Congress. And I think, quite honestly, uh, McCain put it put it out there in the real. This is personal. It's not even political at this point. This is the fact that this man bucked the party establishment in 2007 in, in his views on the war. Uh, I think legitimately so. And the fact of the matter is, you know, so what? So they like, how, in other how words, now they're saying he can't, he can't you know, be uh, the, uh, Barack Obama, President Obama's defense chief because he agrees with Barack Obama on the war. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm I sorry, mean, Joy. That is the that, irony here. They're attacking him for being the guy who gets along with Obama. President Obama and, and uh, Chuck Hagel agree on so many things. They're actually friends. You're right. They have a positive view about the same things in the world. That's why he's going out. And I think President's sticking his neck out for this guy because he really wants them to be his defense chief. They agree on things. Right. And, and McCain, uh, somebody pointed out to me today that McCain said uh, the statement back when he was a Republican as if uh, Hagel's no longer Republican but he, because he dares to agree with the guy hiring him to be the defense chief. Look, McCain, I think, did put it out there today. He committed... Okay, Dwight Eisenhower wasn't a Republican either because he wasn't a hawk. And right. he kept this out of Indochina and kept this out of the Middle East. And he took the heat for that because he was a guy who knew what's going on in the world. Right. He and nowadays, if you're not a neocon, wars, so I guess you're not, you're not sufficiently Republican if you don't want to bomb Iran. Look, you yeah. know, and I mean, it was ironic today when John McCain put it out there and said, basically, you know what? Chuck Hagel was mean to President Bush. He relentlessly criticized the Iraq war. Um, his fellow members mm -hmm. of the Senate thought that he was not a uh, sufficiently loyal Republican. That's pretty rich coming from John McCain, who basically made it his life's yeah, uh, work let's, to let's oppose remember, George W. Bush. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it Chuck Hagel who said that he had an illegitimate child with an African-American and that had somehow produced a South Asian young woman? Exactly. Uh, what kind of that, that stuff about his wife, Cindy, being a drug addict? Yeah, and since was that, when does was John that Chuck McCain... Hagel? No, that was W's people. That was exactly. Carl Rove and that crowd. Right. Exactly. I don't know which of them did it, but somebody did it on that side. And yet he forgives those people. That's right. And he says this guy... I don't know, this is, must be some kind of weird transportation of emotion. Anyway, <laughs> yesterday, John McCain said something truly remarkable, as, as uh, my friend here said, Michael, about a moment of pure honesty. He exposed what's really behind his opposition to Hegel. Let's listen. 
There's a lot of ill will towards uh, Senator Hagel because when he was a Republican, he attacked uh, President Bush mercilessly. At one point said he was the worst president since Herbert Hoover. Uh, said that uh, the uh, surge was the worst blunder since the Vietnam War, which is nonsense. And uh, was very anti his own party and people. People don't forget that. Well, he should have forgot the fact because he never did say he was the worst president since Herbert Hoover. By the way, where do they get it on you? Where do they start on oh, you, Michael? Oh, no, anyway, yeah. Yeah, who put exactly. Michael McCain, by the way, in charge of determining Chuck Hagel's fate? Well, apparently himself, the great eminence Mitch McConnell. According to the Washington Post, quote, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has deputized Senator John McCain as the weather vane by which to judge when Republicans should yield on the filibuster. That might be a confounding decision since John McCain seems to drift from one position to another on Hagel's confirmation. In fact, sometimes in a matter of hours. On Sunday, McCain had this to say about the prospect of a filibuster against Hagel. Let's watch. We've never filibustered a presidential cabinet appointee, and I don't think we should start here. On Monday, which is a day later, of course, McCain was urging his <laughs> colleagues on the Armed Services Committee to vote on Hague's nomination, saying, quote, I believe that he has fulfilled the rigorous requirements that the committee demands. And by the next day, which is Tuesday, he rebuked his colleague Ted Cruz for his harsh critique of Hagel, which I agree with. Look at what McCain said there, rather admirably, I think. Hagel is an honorable man. He has served his country, and no one on this committee in any time should impugn his character or his integrity. We're going to get to some of Cruz's uh, McCarthyite statements in the next segment. But Tuesday night, McC night rather, hours matter, McCain introduced a new wrinkle along with Senators Graham and Iot. He wrote a letter to the White House requesting more information about the White House did during the Benghazi attack. He told Foreign Policy magazine, quote, we need to know what the president's conversations were. I would vote no on cloture on Thursday unless the information is provided. By Tuesday, actually by yesterday, which is almost every day of the week, he's changed his mind. The White House had responded to his satisfaction, but he still didn't vote for cloture. He didn't still, he still wouldn't vote to bring this matter of Hagel's uh, confirmation up to a vote. And here's his latest, let's watch. There are still questions outstanding. I believe that senators have the right to have those questions answered. The senator from South Carolina and I, the senator from New Hampshire, had a, a response from the president today on the question that we had. But there are other questions. Like, uh, can you give us a copy of every speech you ever gave? Can you give us a dollar for dollar assessment of every dollar you ever made? And by the way, if you don't tell us, we're going to accuse you of getting money for the North Koreans. Right. That's the way we're going to pay you. Uh, you know, Joy, you're younger than me, I think, uh, by a lot of years. And I have to tell you, <laughs> this does, we're going to get to this. I'm going to sell this second segment coming up today because we're going back. We went back, our producers, and looked at how Joe McCarthy did it. The same techniques of innuendo, the same character assassination based on nothing that this guy's doing, this guy Cruz, who I don't know what he's running for. People say attorney general. I don't know what job he's applying for. I, can't, I don't know why he's ruining his career with this crap. Your thoughts? Yeah, he's not running for president because I think he was born in Canada. Um, yeah, no, can, you know, you said earlier in your introduction, Chris, that John McCain occasionally remembers who he is. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting to be, uh, agree with Joe Klein. This is who John McCain is. Uh, this is a man who is showing no principle other than peak. He has turned on, as you just showed, his supposed friend Chuck Hagel, his supposed comrade in arms, in a matter of hours to decide to brook this rear guard effort to drum up dirt on this poor man who has been through, I think, enough at this point uh, in terms of trying to get Barack Obama the defense secretary that he wants. And they've dragooned Kelly Ayotte into their little club because Lieberman's gone. Yeah. So the three of them, this sort of merry band of miscreants standing in the way of this guy getting an up or down vote. They have no precedent for it other than saying we're just going to torture this guy because he yeah. turned against the Iraq war, well, period. Well, I'm, I'm not as tough as you are today. <laughs> so I, I will say this, we'll know the true color of uh, Mr. McCain's feelings about life and values when that right wing crowd inevitably turns on his friend Lindsey Graham. Yeah. And you know they, they will. will. And they, they will go to Graham in the That's next right. primary fight in South Carolina and he will have to stand up for his friend. That's, That's right. That's when we'll know. And, and we'll see that. And, and that's why the bed you're, you make right now, you're going to have to lie in and, and, and there's going to be a lot of lonely Republicans. A lot of Republicans fleas, out, by a the lot way, of in fleas and a lot of lonely Republicans. And the, and the point that I take issue with with what the senator said is, you know, he, you know, that Hegel uh, offended the party. Well, he's not running for the nomination of the party. He's not running for anything within the Republican Party. This is an appointment to be Secretary of Defense. And so all of the arguments that are being put up there against him make no sense because they're are all you